try that again. Good morning! <laughs> <laughs> I will never ever say that I did not hear Sharon. <laughs> I will never ever say that I did not hear Sharon. <laughs> that name was distinct, and it was it was loud and clear. So I know. That's right. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, that she is here today. She's feeling her Cheerios. Praise God. Good morning again. Good, Good morning. morning. So glad you're here. Hope you had a wonderful, happy, and safe Thanksgiving. I know. That's the best part. You get those, get those, those yummy afterthoughts. Man, it's the gift that keeps giving. That's right. Almost like the one we're talking about right now. We have a wonderful, 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 did I say wonderful? Wonderful. Wonderful message. There we go. Today. That's right. And if you'll turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 16. Again, that is Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 16. And this is actually a very, very uh, powerful, powerful, powerful question. And it's a series of questions that we have went through before. So I know that I've done this one before. And I'm going to hear when I did it pretty soon here. 3, 15, 20. There we go. All right. Um, it's a question that is a powerful question. And the reason why this question is so powerful is because it's the one who's asking the question is why this is powerful. Um, the question itself, yes, is powerful too. But really, when we focus on this, please hear what I'm saying. The question is very powerful. And it's one that as we go through this time of Advent, and as we look through Advent, there are aspects of Advent that we have to make sure we fully understand. Because when we look at Advent, you're looking at Christ. You're looking at different aspects of him. And each one of these aspects is important. Because as we have sung today, and as we will sing, getting closer, bless you, getting closer to Christmas time, we will hear the songs. We've started singing them now. You've probably been humming them. Old little town of Bethlehem, away in a manger. But do you know what they mean? For those that have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you say, of course I do. Good. Then I have a question. What have you done with the gift? Because if you ask me the question after I say, what did you do with the gift? And you go, hmm? Huh. And then you missed it. <laughs> you missed the importance of it. This is the gift that keeps giving. And why is it a gift that keeps giving? Because, see, these are the aspects of Advent. Mm -hmm. There are five of them. <clears throat> One we're going to talk about today. So there is hope. There is peace. There is joy. There is love. Mm -hmm. It is culminated with Christ. Today we're going to talk about hope. And as we talk about hope today, I want, your, want to ask you to do, do something for me, if you would. Ask a favor of you. Is it okay if I ask you for a favor? Yes. yes sir. Okay. Remember, all of you said it's okay that I ask you. And you said it's okay that we do this. I pray and ask that you open your ears. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes. In your hearts. Really hear what's being said today. Because this is a message that keeps on giving. And it's one that's going to cause you and call for you to examine yourself. The title of our message today 
is who do people say that I am? Who do people say that I am? And remember, we're talking about Advent. So, we're talking about the Advent candle of hope. May we all stand as we get ready to read the Word of God. And if you are able to stand, thank you for standing with us. If you're not able to stand, I understand that you are standing with us. <clears throat> Again, this is Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 16. If you have it, say amen. 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 All right. It reads as follows. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. May God be praised and blessed by the reading of his holy word. You may be seated. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, God, thank you. Thank you for another wonderful day. Father, thank you for all the blessings that you give to us. And Father, thank you for all, Father, that, Lord, we are able to see, hear, and understand. Thank you for knowing our name. Thank you, dear Father, for all the gifts you give us. Lord, thank you for hope. Thank you for being our hope. Thank you for being our peace. Thank you for being our joy. Thank you for being our love. Thank you for being our defender. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you for being, Lord, our strong tower that we run into and are safe. Thank you. Thank you, God, that, Father, we have hope through Jesus Christ, your Son. Father, thank you for the fact that we have a relationship that is real and personal. Father, thank you for the fact, dear Lord, that you love us. You loved us with a cross. Father, not only did you love us with a cross, but you loved us in the tomb. Yes. And, Father, yeah. thank you that on the third day, and rose yes. with all power, yes. all majesty, yes. all honor, all glory. Yes. Yes. And Father, right now you are at the right hand of the Father yes. making intercessions for us. Yes. Thank yes. you for the fact that we have hope. Yes. And that hope, dear Father Lord, is that we have a future and a home. And that home is found with you. Father, thank you, thank you. for all that we have in you, Father. And God, as we go through this time of hearing your word, dear God, please open our eyes, yes. open our hearts, yes. open our ears. Yes. Lord, let us really see and hear you today. Yes. Because, Father, you are asking us a question. Lord, may we answer it. Father, you're asking us a question today. Yes. May we understand it. Father, you're asking us a question today. May we do something yes. with that question. Yes. And Father, may we be about our Father's business. Lord, as we go through this time of Advent, as we go through this time of fully understanding not only who you are, Father, may we be reminded of whose we are. Because, Father, we have been bought with Christ. And it is by and through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, it is with that that you not only, Father, have washed away our sins, but you also give us a charge and a call. You tell us that by accepting the free gift of your son, Jesus Christ, that his name is written on our hearts and that it is through his sacrifice on the cross on our behalf by accepting that free gift that you have given to us, that we have the right to be called your people. And we can call him our God. 
thank you. Thank you for the fact, God, that we can get to know you personally. And Father, as we spend this time learning more about you and more about ourselves, God, Lord, I pray that we would decrease and you would increase. Father, again, may we be about your business, not our own. May we shine like the lights that you want us to shine. Mm -hmm. So, Father, that when we sing the songs, Angels We Have Heard on High, or Old Little Town of Bethlehem, or when we sing Away in a Manger, or even when we sing Joy to the World, mm -hmm. Father, that we will truly, 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 truly understand the full magnification and ramifications of what those songs really mean and carry the message that is contained within to a world that so desperately needs to know yeah. about hope, about joy, about peace, about love, about your son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Father, may we stand boldly mm -hmm. and triumphantly. Boldly. May we speak clearly and directly. Yes. Father, if the enemy stands in our way, may we look past him to your cross. Yes. And Father, to the job that you have created in advance yes. for us to do. Yes. Oh God, may we walk and talk and be your witnesses yes. that you have called for us to be. Amen. And Father, we do this in the name of your son, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. And Father, as I get ready to bring forth this message, God, that you have given us today, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will remove me right out yes. of the way yes. and that you speak to your people. Yes. Speak, Lord, for yes. your servants are listening. As we pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Our question today, or our sermon title today, <laughs> is who do people say that I am? And again, this is Advent time. Yay! We Yay. love Advent time! Yay! That's right. <laughs> if you ask a kid what time is it, they have it down. You know how many days it is till Christmas? <laughs> Look at that, I heard it. I heard it. That child got it down. She may not know her ABCs, but she knows how many days it is until Christmas. And that girl is smart. I know she is. But she knows the ABCs too. A, apple. B, uh, baking soda. C, cookies. D, all of the above. She's going to play us a song for her Christmas play on the piano. See? Nice. Here's the thing, guys. What a powerful, powerful, powerful time this is. This is the time when we celebrate. Yay! Yay. This is the time when we give gifts. Yay! This is the time where on the 26th, some people return gifts. <laughs> what? Yep. And this is the time after that that you buy your gift. Yay! No, just kidding. Point of this is, this is the time. And this is a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. But friends, is it okay if I call you friends? Yep. Okay, I'm just making sure. You know, I always call you friends, but you know, you may like, I don't know you, bro. But the point of it is, you guys, the world doesn't understand gift giving. Nope. They don't understand. See, the world thinks, and I have to bring you into this before we start today. We got to understand something about this. You see, the world thinks that gift giving is find the biggest, loudest, brightest, most expensive thing out there and give it and then run away. You know what it is? To your kids. You give them the biggest, the brightest, the loudest, the most expensive toy that makes all the noise and does all the things. And then you run. And then you look as the parents look at you and go, why did you do this to me? <laughs> While they're sitting here, pew, 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 pew. You're like, Lord, no, why? That's 
the world. See, the world thinks that the bigger the gift is, and the more flashier the gift is, and the more loud the gift is, and the more that I paid for that, the better it is. Right? Don't y'all think that? Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. You know, sometimes we look at the uh, 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 there's not enough presents under that tree. Dude, that one cost a lot. Huh. Well, then there's enough under that tree. That's the wrong idea, right? Right. Because what does that do? See, that breeds apathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy is what you want. You want people to be empathetic or excited about what's going on. But apathy is the absence of that. It is when you don't care. You're indifferent to it. It doesn't matter. You know what the most unfortunate thing is? This season, this time, doesn't matter. In the world's eyes, this doesn't matter. This is just another Christmas season. Or excuse me, I'm saying it wrong. Another holiday season. Because see, they've taken Christ out of Christmas. Mm -hmm. They've taken Christ out of the occasion. And so for many people today, as they go through this time, as we started this countdown, you can now see how the world values this time. They just treat it as just another time. Just another Christmas. Oh, sure, we see Christ's name in it. But you know, there's many that write Exodus. Mm -hmm. That bothers me. I'm not going to lie. It really does. And the reason it does is because I love Christ so much. Mm -hmm. And I know what this day, what this, this season is about. It's about the gift that God gave to us. And it's Christ. When you try to remove Christ out of Christmas, you don't have Christmas. You just have another day. <clears throat> That's right. But see, in the church, we must make sure that we remember what these things represent. We must understand and remember what Christ means and represents. So we've come to this very, very interesting part of scripture. Many people would look at this and as we look at it, we see it and we say, wow. You know, Simon answered, right. Right? Yeah. He did. Don't get me wrong, he did. But the point of it is, if we look at it, we go, man, Simon answered, right. But there's something that happened before Simon answered, right? Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, as we look at it, we understand that taking a look at this, he says, and I quote, Who do men say that I, the son of man, he asked the question. This is the response that he got. Some say, John the Baptist. Okay? Some say Elijah. Some others, Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. Now it's interesting, right? That you hear all these answers. Now, of course, we know Jesus is standing right in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. But he asked, he didn't ask what they thought. He asked, what did the world say? What do others say? What are people around you saying? What is their viewpoint on who Jesus is? Who do they see Jesus as? Who are they receiving Jesus as? Who do they take him to be? Who is he to them? And their answers was John the Baptist. Now we know John the Baptist, don't we? Mm -hmm. John the Baptist died. Wait a minute. So you can imagine that when they said, so say John the Baptist. And <laughs> Jesus looked at him go to him right here. Some say Elijah. Okay. But then we know Elijah because see Elisha and Elijah were walking together. Mm -hmm. 
And Elijah told Elisha, if you see when I'm taken into heaven, then whatever you ask of me is going to be given to you. Whatever you're asking of me is going to be given to you. So he asked for a double portion of what had been given to Elijah. And as they were sitting there walking together, a chariot of fire came and swooped Elijah up and took him into heaven. Interestingly enough, Elijah, this is what people were waiting for, the second coming of Elijah, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the second coming of Elijah is the first person that they named, John the Baptist. What did John the Baptist do? He came to prepare the way of the Lord. He came to proclaim that the, the Lord's anointed was coming. So listen, so both individuals are talking about the same individual. They're talking about the same individual. So their aim is off, right? The people's aim are off. Listen, and then they say, well, Jeremiah. Okay, what did Jeremiah do? Jeremiah kept telling people, hey, you need to turn your lives back to God. Now, that's interesting enough because we know the children of Israel and their story when you go through Jeremiah. And then he had to write a secondary book, Lamentations. <laughs> But the point is, everything Jeremiah is talking about is he's telling the people to turn their hearts back to God. That's what he's telling them to do. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. As we start to look at this. And as we're looking at it, we're saying, man, this is good stuff. Man, this is all good. Man, we're going forward. Or they say, or one of the prophets. Mm. Interesting last point there, huh? Or one of the prophets. So they're thinking, well, if I if I fire the shot out there, I'm gonna be right. Some one of these ways I'm gonna be right. Right? Right. That's what they're saying. They're saying, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it right. <laughs> and Jesus is standing there looking at. And as Jesus is standing there looking at him, this is what you're seeing. Really. We're looking at this. We might laugh a little bit. We might snicker a little bit. We might be, are you serious? But let me tell you something today. I'm dead serious. This conversation happened. And not only did this conversation happen, but the thing is, is that, see, we hear and see already where the people's mind was at, where their hearts were at. Because Jesus is asking a very powerful and pointed question. And in this question, what he's asking is, is he's saying, who do men say that I am? Who do people say that I, the son of God, son of man, am? Who am I? Well, let me ask this question today. Who do people say that Jesus is today? When you ask them, do they say that he's the son of God? Or do they have different ideas? Do they have different things that they want to say? Do they have different opinions? Are they all over the, all over the scope in regards to who Jesus is? Do they tell you, you know, he was a good teacher. But, you know, I don't consider him to be, you know, Jesus. Or, you know what, he, he, he says some good things. But, um, yeah, I, I just don't see him. I, I don't know. I don't know who he is. Mm. We hear that today, don't we? Mm -hmm. Hear that a lot, don't you? Yep. One of the most scariest things of all, sometimes you're hearing that from your fellow believers in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. That we, people that say we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, mm. but yet that's the answers we're given? Bruh, you don't know him. But you're saying that you do. Mm. Is there something wrong with that? 
Y'all think there's something wrong with that? Mm -hmm. I do. I think there's something really wrong with that. And what is this? What is wrong with it? It's the fact that we have forgotten who he is. And the worst part of that is, is if you forget who he is, that means that you also have forgotten whose you are. Mm. Well, hope you guys are happy because today I'm going to help you remember who you are and who he is. So who is Jesus? He is our hope. Aren't you glad? Amen. Jesus is our hope. So I want to start off our service right. So we got to make sure I stretch a bit. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad that you are here with us today. Today we are taking a look at the first aspect of Advent, which is hope. Jesus is our hope. Man, as we examine our text today, we see that Jesus is speaking with the disciples. Okay, that's not normal. I mean, that is normal, but that's not, that's not out of the normal, what I meant to say, about what's going on. Jesus is talking to the disciples. He was talking to them all the time. But this time, is different. Because this time, he's asking them a probing question. Then he asked a powerful question. I wrote that down. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, I have written down here to expound on why this is important. And I just did that. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. And I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't. You know why I didn't? Because I only talk about one of his names, which is Jesus. But he also has another name. What is his name? Emmanuel. Which is God with us. So in other words, here's the thing. God asked a question. Mm -mm -mm. God asked a question. And he asked this question. Who do people say that I am? Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Who do people say that he is? And then this is their answers. Well, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others, Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. So, you know, one of, the, <laughs> one of my favorite movies out there is Star Wars. And it's not for the reason that you think. I could care less about the story. I care about the stormtroopers. Because they can't hit anything. You could be standing right in front of them. They, are pew, 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 pew. they shot everything around you. They're all going, look, we made an outline of you. Oh, awesome. Point of it is, they don't hit what they're supposed to do. That's the same thing you're seeing right here. Every one of their answers hits around where Jesus is, but they ain't hitting who Jesus is. Imagine being inside of a boxing ring, and you're going to fight with somebody, right? All right, we're going to go in. Ding, ding. if they would just hit each other. <laughs> or imagine, you know, go to a karate match. All right, everybody, ah, man, this would be awesome if they would just be closer to everybody. See the problem? You can know all the moves. You can see everything there. But if you don't put the two together, it makes no sense, right? Doesn't make sense. Here's the thing. He's asking his disciples, who do people say that I am? And here's one of the biggest indictments against the people. Are you ready? They had God's word. Every single one of the individuals they list had access to God's word. Stop and think about it. Every one of them. The prophets that God kept sending to the children of Israel to tell them to turn back from their wicked ways, to turn towards God. And guess what? He wouldn't do it. He kept walking in their own ways. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah. Everybody say that with me. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Writes in 
Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34, the new covenant that God is getting ready to institute. And who is that coming through? Our hope. Through the one who is standing in front of them asking the question. Wow. Wow. So the very one who Jeremiah was writing about <coughs> is standing in front of his disciples right then and asking them a question. Who do men say that I am? And these are the answers that they gave. John the Baptist. We know John the Baptist. John the Baptist has one of the most quoted lines you know, that's in the Bible. Well, two of them that, you know, a lot of people quote. Which is, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And I must decrease so that he can increase. Well, who's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. Wow. Do you start to see all of this? We ain't even going to throw Isaiah into there. Who are we? See, the point of the matter is, as we look at this, this is one powerful thing for us to keep in mind. As we're looking, we're seeing what's being said. So I just want you to listen for a moment, if you would. We're going to go to that very book of Isaiah. And we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. That's Isaiah. If you want to follow along, you can. And I encourage you to do so. I told you to listen, but make sure you turn and listen, not just sit there and listen. So you can read this and see that we're all reading it together. Here it is. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for lashes, excuse me, for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Wow. Powerful, right? Amen. Question. Who is Isaiah writing about? Christ. How do you know that? Want me to tell you? Yeah, it does. And here's the other thing. Because Jesus himself went into the synagogue and asked for the scroll or the book of Isaiah. And he opens the book of Isaiah and he turns to Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3, and he starts reading it. And as he reads it, he answers and says that today, this scripture in your midst has been fulfilled. Wow. Amen. Wow. That's your Jesus. That's my Jesus. That's Jesus. Jesus, who Isaiah is writing about. And look, Jesus isn't here yet. Mm hmm. Isaiah would not see Jesus with his eyes here. Oh yeah, Isaiah has seen Jesus. Trust me, he has. But see, he doesn't see him when he's writing this. This is one of the messianic 
passages, meaning that it's talking about things the Messiah is going to do, or it's talking about the Messiah himself. And this is who he's writing about, is Jesus himself. And now, standing in front of his disciples, Jesus, who you just got done hearing about, asks a question, and he says, who do men say that I am? And they say, John the Baptist. Wait a minute, he don't look like he's taking that one. Okay, some say Elijah. Uh, wait a minute. Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. Okay. Each one of them talk about hope. Each one of them talk about restoration. Church, each one of them talked about the fact that Christ comes, that the Lord's anointed comes to deliver peace, that he comes to deliver hope, that he comes to deliver joy, that he comes to show love. In our helpless estate. Do you know what a helpless estate is? You see, as a baby, a baby is in a helpless estate. A newborn is in a helpless estate. A child, a young child, is in a helpless estate. And yet, even us grown children, that's right, I still call us children. We still know they are. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> We're in a helpless estate. Because there's something that we can't take care of on our own. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? It's a sin debt. See, sin covers us. Because anyone that is born into this world is born with a sin debt on Except for one. But he came mm -hmm. so that we might have liberation from our bounds, that the prison doors that have held us back might be broken yes. to give liberation, to break the chains of bondage yeah. that have held us down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He came so that those chains could be broken. And his name is Jesus. Yes. He is our hope. You see, there are many today in the world that don't know that hope. And see, this is why Isaiah is writing this. Because there are many today that, guess what? They're held captive. They're held captive by the world system. They're held captive by the world's thinking. See, in John chapter 15, Jesus makes this powerful statement. He says, if the world hates you, take heart. They hate me first. And if they hate me, they hate the one who sent me. Mm -hmm. See, if the world loved you, See, the world loves its own. But the reason why the world doesn't love us, guess why? Because Jesus chose us out of the world. You've been bought with a price. And the price you've been bought with is his blood. Yeah. You see, that sacred, that love, that loving, that most beautiful, most precious, oh, precious is the flow mm -hmm. that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes. See, when we sing that song, we're singing about a truth. That's theological. That's one that's telling you that, guess what? We don't have sanctification. We don't have forgiveness of sin. We don't have a connection with God without the blood of Jesus. We don't. See, we sung a song today. Oh, how he loves you and me. Yes, he does. See, if he didn't love us, oh, good Lord, I might actually preach today. If he didn't love us, if he didn't love us, if he didn't love us, see, there's another song that's in our hymn book, and sometimes we don't sing it, but we need to. You know what it's called? He knows my name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
he didn't love us, he wouldn't know our name. Yes. Because on the cross of Calvary, remember guys, I tell you, as we've been going through each one of our sermons that we have been going through, I tell you that there are times when Jesus gives us the opportunity to see through his eyes. And as we look through his eyes from the cross of Calvary, we see something beautiful. And what is it? Is that there are people that are passing in front of Jesus Christ. And as they're passing in front of Jesus Christ, guess what? He's calling them out by name. Yes, say that. By name. He knows your name. See, if you come to faith in Christ Jesus, if you place your faith and trust in him, then guess what? You have forgiveness of sin, and it comes from Jesus Christ. And guess what that is? That is hope. Because before we had hope, we were in a helpless estate. We had no hope. Why did we have no hope? Because how can someone that can't pay his own sin debt try to pay yours. You see, I could try to pay your sin debt, but there's a problem. I have one on me. Yeah. And as much as I would want to try to cancel yours, guess what? I would just be incurring yours on me. Mm -hmm. And guess what that does? That makes me doubly sin. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. That ain't what that's supposed to be. You know, in mathematics, I know that's a subject a lot of kids don't love to hear right now because they are, I'm going to break I don't need to hear this. <laughs> When you have a negative and a negative, guess what? They add up. Mm -hmm. What? How'd that be? They're supposed to subtract each other, right? No. See, they're the same sign. Mm -hmm. And when they're the same sign, guess what? They add up. You see, sin that's on you, it just continues to rise up. Because guess what? Until it's been forgiven, it piles up, and it piles up, and it piles up. There might be a sin that you have that you think, I'm good. I can handle this. But the more that time goes on, you realize it gets heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier, and heavier, and heavier until the point where you can't walk no more. And then you start crawling, but it's heavier and it's heavier and it's heavier. And then you stop crawling, and now you're trying to do military scoops, and you're doing it, but it's heavier, and it's heavier, and it's heavier, and it's heavier. And then you can't scoop no more because you pressed against it, but it keeps getting heavier, and it keeps getting heavier, and now you can't breathe anymore, and then it gets heavier, and it gets heavier, and then you say, oh, and there's someone that can take this off of me because I'm in a helpless estate. And God comes and takes it right off of you. Yeah. That's a helpless estate. And all thanks be to God yeah. that Jesus came to mm -hmm. remove that debt yeah. from us. Mm -hmm. He paid for that with his blood. Oh, and it is through his stripes, through his blood, that we are healed yeah. and forgiven. And our sin debt is paid in full. He is our high priest. As we continue in our text, we see that Jesus, Jesus' question gathers another set of answers. See, the first set was that. But then he turns and he looks at us. Then he says, but who do you say that I am? Church, there's a question Jesus is asking you today. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? There's a question he's asking you. I know that silence. The reason I know that silence is because that's a question that you can't dodge. Because Jesus is asking you directly. He demands an answer. You know why he demands an answer? See, Friday night in our Bible study, 
We talked about this. We've talked about this before, guys, in our, in our time of, of different sermons. Is that when we pray the Lord's Prayer, there's a phrase in there that's very powerful. And it says this, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And here's the thing. When God says something to be done in heaven, there's no wait time on that. It gets done. When God says something, there's an answer given back. If he asks a question, he demands an answer. And one shall be given to him. And the point of the matter is, is that, see, we're here on earth. But that don't change the fact that God is still God. And that he demands an answer. So remember, as we're talking about this, Jesus is standing in front of his disciples. But what is his name? Emmanuel. God with us. So God himself asked the disciples a powerful question. But who do you say that? Church, God's waiting for your answer. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for you to answer him today. Who is he to you? Is he your hope? Is he the one that you place your hope and faith in? Is he the one that you believe in wholeheartedly? Do you trust and believe that everything that he has said and that when you read his word, it has proven to be true that he is who he is? Do you believe that Jesus is your hope? Do you believe that God can do what he said he would do? Do you believe his name, Jehovah Jireh, God is my provider? Do you believe that he is your banner? Do you believe that he is your peace? Yes. Do you believe that he is your joy? Yes. Do you believe that? Because if you believe it, he's asking you a question today. And the question he's asking you is, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? He didn't ask about your friend. He didn't ask about your family member. He didn't ask about your mama. He didn't ask about your daddy. He asking you. Who do you say that I am? See, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you owe him an answer. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you this. No answer is an answer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's an answer. And that's an answer that's more deeply troubling and one that you have to get right between you and God. See, there's a lot of people that are saying they have a relationship with Jesus Christ with their words, but their actions are far from it. Jesus would say this too. You say you love me with your lips, but your heart is far from it. You know why Jesus says that? Because God said it too. He said, you worship me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. You know when he said that? When the children of Israel, instead of serving God, who had brought them by the hand out of the land of Egypt, into a land that they had been promised. And see, here's the thing. God made that promise to Abraham. We read about that this morning. And he made a promise to Abraham that his descendants would inherit the land that he was promising them. And do you know what the children of Israel did in that land? Hmm. You know what they did? Hmm. You want to hear a funny story? Mm -hmm. See, what had happened was, you know it's good when I say what had happened was. Any story that starts with what had happened was, mm -hmm. it's a classic. So you better make sure you pop me some popcorn mm -hmm. and get you a good seat because it's going to be good. God brought them by the hand into the land that had been promised to them. The one who was leading them, who God had appointed to lead them, is Joshua. You know what Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15? He said this. He said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Okay, we all know that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. Where were the children of Israel walking into? The land that was promised to them, right? Okay, here's, here's his question. Who were they worshiping at the time they was going in? Baal. Yep. Mm -hmm. One God was Baal. A false God. Wait a minute. Hold on, let me make sure I have this right. 
the children of Israel are going into a land that the one true God, remember I am that I am, mm -hmm. he led them by the hand into this land and you turned your back on him and started worshiping a false God as you were going into that land. Who does that? Who does that? The children special, right? Guess what, folks? We do the same thing. We do the same thing. Because God continues to show his faithfulness time after time after time. You see, this is one thing about God. He is faithful and he is true. If nothing else is known about God, and church, I need you to hear me today. There are many situations that you are facing. There are many things that are going on in your life. And you may not know, Lord, I don't know how we're going to make this happen. Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen. Lord, I don't know how this is going to be. I want to tell you this. Remember these names of God. Faithful and true. Faithful and true. Faithful and true. You know one thing I know about God? God continues to work for the good of those who love him. He does. He continues. He's always at work. He's always at work, and he's providing for you. So when you say, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work. I only got this much, God. God says, how much you got? I only got... How did that double? Lord, when I walked in here, all I had was two little cents. And Lord, how do I have two hands full of, of cents, God? How, how do I have that much? Lord, I, I didn't come in with that, but I'm leaving out with more. God loves you. And he blesses you in ways that you do not always see. You may not know where that blessing is coming from, but know this, God is faithful to see you through any situation that is going on. Can the pastor talk about himself for a second? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about myself for a second. Many of y'all already know this. I was on my way to work. And as I was getting ready to go to work, got dressed. Guess what? Put my wallet somewhere. Wasn't where it was supposed to be. Could not find that. And I was, oh, I was, I was going crazy. The pastor went crazy. I ain't going to lie. I was so mad at myself. I was so mad. I was so mad. And I was just, I was so frustrated because I know I shouldn't have done this. And man, I was, I was not acting like a Christian should act. Pastor is telling the truth. He did. I was ugly. Wasn't I ugly? Very I was very ugly. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, 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 let me say, the past, you know, the cool in there died. But I was looking ugly in that moment, okay? Even I can admit, I can look ugly from time to time. But I was looking bad. And my mom, who was the voice of reason who God was speaking through at that time, said, boy, go to work. And I'm like, but I don't have a wallet. I need my wallet. late for work. Was that okay? Nope. Not really. But I'm almost never late. So for me to be late for work, there was something going on. And they knew that. I called them, let them know I was going to be late. As soon as I found my wallet, I was there. You know something that happened? Before I had a, before I had went and lost my wallet at that time, I took a picture my driver's license. Same day I was fussing at my mom about we were taking her to an appointment and they needed some of her, her, uh, her cards and stuff. And we were having a hard problem finding it. So she took pictures of it. I took a picture of my, of my, my driver's license. I had it on me. In that moment, I wasn't thinking about that. But God provided me with the sense enough that if I did get stopped by the police and they said, who are you? I had identification that shows who I am. Because it looks like me. Drove to work. 
God got me to work. Say Amen. Amen. And then I worked. And then it's time to go home. And God got me home safely. Mm -hmm. No issues and problems. And when I got home, God started saying, hey, remember everywhere you were yesterday. Lord, I went and checked everywhere. Boy, listen. Remember where you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I had forgotten some places I was actually sitting. So I go over to the first place I was. Check over there. Well, it's not there. And I go over to our other couch. I go by there, and I know I can sit on this couch. And I lift up the bag. And do you know what was sitting right there on the floor underneath this bag? It's a wallet. A wallet. I tore the house up. I literally tore that house up. Looking for this wallet that was sitting right there. In my frustration, in my anger, you say, what does that have to do with hope? What does that have to do with anything we're talking about right now? Let me tell you what it does. Everything. You want to know why? Because at the time that I was acting the way that I was, what if somebody had been in our house? Was I acting like a believer? No. I was acting like anything other than. I was I'm surprised I didn't turn green and turn into the Incredible Hulk and start turning down walls and the Hulk smash, Hulk smash. But then I know if I'd have done that, then the bigger Hulk would have then come out and tore me up and that would have been my mom. Yeah. But the point of that is, is that God, Jesus is asking us a question. God is asking us the question and he's saying, who am I? You know what? I had to say something after it was done. You know what I said, God? God, you are faithful and true. You know why I said he's faithful and true? He was faithful to see me to work safely. He was faithful to let me get there and work. He was faithful that when I got there, my boss at the time was sympathetic to the fact that I'm never late. I'm almost never late. I'm always there. So for this one time that I'm showing up late, I mean, yeah, he was frustrated because, yeah, people got to stay longer. And I apologized to him when I got there that, hey, you had to stay longer because of that. But here's the thing. They're like, oh, man, it's good. It's good. God took care of me. He was faithful to me. And then after all this stuff, I was more, look, you know what? I was really mad. I was mad because, you know what? My mom had, had entrusted me with the care over something she had. And I was mad at myself because if I lost that, I lost something that she hadn't trusted me. So I was more mad about that than I was about anything I had. But you know what? God said, I got you. I got it under control. I hope and place my faith and trust in you. And you know what? He is faithful to see me through, even when I'm looking ugly, even when I'm nasty. You know one of the most beautiful things about God? He's slow to anger and quick to forgive. That's the other hope that we have. Because, see, Jesus understands us. How well? So well. If you turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, we're going to be reading verses 13. Through, excuse me, 14 through 16. <clears throat> and it reads as follows. Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points, tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Folks, I can't say this any better than that says, it. oh wait, I think I can it's called hope. Because that's what Jesus brings us. Jesus brings us hope. Jesus is the answer to the world today. 
Jesus is the answer for the world today. See, we understand Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. He's our hope. He's the one that we need to place our faith and trust in. Thanks be to Jesus. Our last point today is that our hope is found in Him. It's real simple. Mm -hmm. John 14, 6. Jesus says this. Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Yeah. You see, guys, heaven is our home. Mm -hmm. And it's a home that we can have. It's a home that we can have. And Jesus comes to restore and rekindle a relationship that was broken. And it wasn't because of anything God did. God did. It was something that we did. Mm -hmm. See, we are the guilty part. And we are the ones that are under a helpless estate. We are the ones that are holding a sin debt. And we are holding a debt that we cannot pay. Oh, but I am so glad that we have a friend and his name is Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus came mm -hmm. to pay that debt. So for you today, as we look and examine this text, and as we close this today, I hope that when you look at Christmas time, and you look at this first candle of Advent, or you look at the first aspect of, of, of Advent, I know many times you may not have a candle around to light the four candles, five candles actually, but the four candles of the aspect, which is hope, which is peace, which is joy, which is love, and the fifth candle, which is the Christ candle, we will be doing that together. We'll be lighting these, so tonight when you come, we will light the first candle of Advent. The fifth candle we will light together on Christmas Eve, culminating all those candles together. Folks, say thank you to God. And the reason why you need to say thank you to God is because in our helpless estate, he gives us hope. And that hope is in Jesus. So I have one thing to say to you today. If you are needing hope, and if you're needing to know the one who is the bringer and the giver of hope, then I just have to tell you this. Choose Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for another wonderful day. And thank you, dear Father, for the fact that you are our hope. Father, Lord, when we are searching for all these answers, Lord, I'm just so thankful that you make the answers clear. And you give it to us, Father. It's been in our hands all this time. Lord, we know that it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, that we have hope. And Father, I know there's someone today who may be saying that I don't know if there's any hope out there. Oh, God in heaven, I pray, Lord, that they hear this message today. And Father, I pray that as they hear that message, that, Lord, they would surrender their hearts to you. God, we thank you because we know that without you, how lost we will be. But Father, with you, we have our home. And I'm just reminded of that song, Father. Thank you for putting it in my mind that I have a mansion just over the hilltop. Father, thank you. Thank you, dear Father, for the fact Jesus. that in you, you have a home that you're making for us. And that's only for those that have a relationship with you. And Father God, I pray that today. Lord, that someone in their heart and life would say, I'm done choosing myself. And I'm done choosing the world standards. And I'm done looking for hope in all these other places. I've looked in drugs. I've looked in alcohol. I've looked in women. I've looked on all these other vices. And every single time I look for hope, I keep getting, I keep getting not only destroyed, but I keep getting let down. I'm going to look to Jesus. And God, I thank you because I know that you are faithful and you are true. And Lord, I know that you will see us through to the end. Father, we give you all praise. We give you all glory. For you alone are worthy. As we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for his sake.